Hello, good morning, you all. My name is Ashley. This is Royal Dominion Authority. How are y'all doing on today? I know y'all ain't seen me in a few days, but it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. So listen, you all. If you all want to see God's hand really move in your life, I mean, we bless every day when we wake up. We bless when we come and we go. We bless when we're in the city. We're blessed when we're in the fields, right? But if you really want to see the hand of God move, do the very thing that you are afraid of doing. Do it. Do it. And when I tell you, eyes have not seen, neither have ears heard. And I say that because I had wrote a post on last night before I went to bed last night. I wrote a Facebook post and because I was reflecting. So I was really writing out of, out of my thoughts. But I, I felt like it was for somebody. I don't know who it was for. But I'm like, you know, let me write this out, Father God, because you're right. So God reminded me of a time when I was in spiritual depression last year. And... Not spiritual depression, but spiritual suicide. Like I fell into a depression. And this type of depression that I fell into, you all, I I just, you know, don't have an idea of, well, then I did not have an idea um, of what I was feeling. Because I, I was depressed when I was younger for a long time, for years on years on years. And I knew what depression felt like. But last year when I fell into this depression, I didn't understand why I was depressed. I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand what was taking place. I didn't understand. And I didn't even understand the feeling of me de being depressed because this feeling was very much different from what I felt, you know, in my younger years of depression. It felt different. It felt like I was literally about to die. Like I didn't have to kill myself. It felt like I was just going to die, right? And when I tell you, you all, and I just heard this in my spirit, you you felt what it feel like to die in sin. My God. So that's what it was. I felt like what it felt to die, to be dead in sin. Like, we don't know when our time is coming. We don't. A lot of us are waiting on Jesus to come, but we really need to get it right day to day instead of just waiting on Jesus. We need to be getting it right, right? Every day that we wake up, we need to be pressing towards the mark for real. So this Facebook post that I had made, I was literally saying how um, last year when I was in that spiritual depression, which felt like spiritual suicide. That's what it was. Spiritual suicide. Um, I remember going to the altar two, two times. Now, I was in this depression for like three months. But I remember going to the altar two times. I went to the altar one time on a Sunday. And I went to the altar one time on a Thursday. These two times that I went to the altar was very, sh sh you know, short in between. Probably like a week or two after one another. So... And I remember the first time I went to the altar, my pastor was basically telling me, you know, Ashley, you could have been so far. You could have been farther than where you are now. You could have already had your own business. You could have already wrote your other book because I've already written a book, but I was a um, like a co-author on a book. But he was basically telling me I could have already had my own business. I could have already wrote my own book. I could have already been married. I could have already been, you know, doing everything that God said that I would be doing. And I remember when my pastor was telling me that he was like, you basically miss God. Basically, you shut God out like you won't let God in. There are certain areas, certain places in your heart that you won't let God in. Every time God opens a door for you, and I remember my pastor telling me this, every time God opens a door for you, you close it. You don't walk in it. You don't let God in. You don't go through that door. And all I could do was just cry. 
And at the altar, I'm, I'm crying, I'm crying because I'm receiving the word and I, I, the word is resonating with my spirit. And when I when it sat down and when I went home for like a few weeks, I'm asking God, like, what, you know, what is it that I've done? Like, how did I shut you out? Like, what areas in my life did I shut you out? And God began to take me down memory lane and to show me every area in my life that I didn't really allow God to be God, basically. Every area in my life that I didn't allow God's hand to move because of fear, because of doubt, because of procrastination, because of, you know, just a lack of faith in some areas. See, I'm the type of person, my faith is big, you all. Like, I don't believe there is no mountain that I cannot climb or no valley that I can't cross over, right? Or no hurdle that I can't jump over. Like, that's how big my faith is. But in some areas of my life, you know, specifically speaking, my faith was like a little wavering because you know, I was like a little fearful of doing certain things, speaking certain things, you know, just living life a certain way that God called me to live it. That's basically what my pastor was saying that Sunday. But I didn't understand until I began to ask God questions, until I began to seek God out in every area of my life, right? So I went to the altar one night on a Thursday night, Bible study night, and my pastor was talking about Luke chapter 5, how the disciples was out fishing the whole night and they did not catch any fish. And in the middle of the night, I believe, or early morning, God asked the disciples to cast your net to the other side. Like, try it another way. Try it. You've been doing it this way all this long time, right? Try it another way. Since you didn't catch fish doing it your way, try it this way, which is my way. And when they did that, they caught so many fish that the net was just so heavy, you know, like they just had more than enough. They had abundance. And that night after my pastor preached, I went to the altar because I felt like it was my time. I felt like I had came out of my depression. I was at the end of coming out of that spiritual depression. Like I was still depressed a little bit, but it wasn't like it was in the beginning and in the middle of that spiritual uh, suicide journey, spiritual depression journey. And so after my pastor preached that word that morning, that night, I was just like, wow. So I went to the altar and my pastor, he basically told me, he was like, you're you want to commit suicide and i'm crying i'm crying and i'm crying and one of the other prophets who served in our ministry he came and he just stood on the side of me and he began to intercede in the spirit while my pastor was praying for me and my pastor was just speaking to my spirit man my pastor was actually building my spirit man up because see my spirit knew the holy spirit inside of me knew that i was coming out of that depression and i felt it in the spirit that i was coming out but i needed a word to be spoken over my life to give me that 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 power that i can and will come out that i no longer and you know that I'm no longer dead, that I'm no longer dying, that I'm living now. I have life. God has breathed his new life in me. So that's what took place that night. And over the months, because this happened last year, the end, the, like the middle towards the end of last year. And so over the next few months, God began to just take me on this ride this journey with him just me and him and he just began to show me all the things that I was lacking in like all the fear that I lacked all of the um things that I second guessed that I could do that I was just fearful of doing because I was scared to mess up or I was scared to let God down or I was scared to just make the wrong turn or the wrong move knowing what God is telling me to do but I was just scared to do it because I did not want to mess up like God was telling me it's time for you to start your business I gave you I got like four not four. I got like six business ideas and like three ministry ideas that I was scared to step out on. And when I tell you it's big, when God gives you a vision, when he gives you an idea, it's bigger than you. So 
of course you're going to be thinking like, God, like, can I really do this? Or, oh, God, it's too big. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to make the wrong step. I want to do it every way that you call me to do it. I don't want to, you know, so those, those are the things that was in my heart. But it also kept me back from, held me back from doing what God was calling me to do. And I know that God was calling me to do certain things. He was calling me to um, speak certain things. He was calling me to go certain ways. He was calling me to, um, you know, just operate in a certain way, in certain things at a certain capacity. And I was scared. I didn't do it. And um, it led, led me, my fear led me to procrastination, right? My fear led me to stagnation. My fear led me to complacency. My fear led me to slowfulness. But when I realized, well, I been knew that I was in all of these things. And can I tell you all, that's, those are sins too. Those are missing the mark. Complacency and stagnation is sin. It's missing the mark of God, right? That's what sin means, armatia, is missing the mark. And so all of those things was leading me to miss the mark. It was leading me down a rabbit hole. And But God saved me. God redeemed me. God pulled me up out of that rabbit hole. God tried me with fire. And I came out. I came out. God tried me with fire. And I came out as pure gold. And I, I, I feel like I'm still being tried. But the, the, the testing, the testing of my faith is not how it was then because now i've come out and now i'm doing those things that god has called me to do so basically that was my that was what my facebook post was and i also too put on there on the end that even if you've messed up even if you're broken even if you feel alone even if you feel afraid even if you feel that you don't have the support because that was another thing i didn't think that i was going to have the support that i know that i needed you know a lot of times God gives us to do something or to speak something and we think that we just need this this support from certain people or and, and but the long long as God is supporting you, long as God told you to do it, that's your support. Support will come from other people. But lean on the support of God first. Then your support in the natural with people, it will surely come. You're still going to have some people that's going to hate on you, baby. I'm just getting started in my business and people hating on me already, but I don't care. Before I went through that spiritual suicide, depression, whatever it is, I might have cared. But now, baby, I don't care. I notice it, but I don't, I don't, you know, dwell on it. God is looking for people who's going to move, who's going to trust him. Because we're human. He know that we're going to be afraid sometimes. He know that we're going to have a little fear. He know we're going to have a little uncertainty sometimes. But God is looking for people who is going to move, who's going to do it, but who's going to actually trust him in the process. Right? So if I can give you all any encouraging word for this week, trust God. Do the very thing that you are afraid of doing. Do it. Do it. Do it. It's not going to hurt you, right? Do it. Do the very thing that you are afraid of doing. Be, be, why? Because that is the thing that you are going to be great in. That's why you're afraid because it's going to produce greatness from your loins. It's going to produce everything that God imagined. It's going to produce, it's going to produce everything that God promised you. But you got to start it. Even if you started it, you got to have the faith to get to the middle of it. Because if you have the faith to get to the middle of it, God will extend your faith and he will have, give you faith to finish it. But you have to trust and believe God that whatever it is that God has told you to do, whatever way that God has told you to go, whatever words that God has given you to speak, come on, do it. Walk in that thing and walk heavy. Show the enemy that he has no control over you. Show the enemy that he has no legal right over you. Show the enemy that he has no power over you. Agree with God and partner with heaven in that whatever it is that God has called you to in this season. Trust God. Like C.C. Wine and say, believe for it. Because you shall not want in this season if you trust God. Period. 
God is going to make your enemy 